Hey, Wonder Hussy here. In the middle of nowhere again. But this time I'm really super excited for two reasons. One, I'm out here with my girlfriend Jessica, who I haven't gone adventuring with in a long time. And two, she and I decided to go check out another one of those uh, volunteer cabins. They're old like mining cabins, miners cabins that have been restored by volunteers and they're available to stay in on a first come first serve basis. Well, she and I decided to go check out, I think what's considered to be like the crown jewel of all the uh, adopter cabins or volunteer cabins. It's a really nice old mining cabin way up in the mountains outside Death Valley. I'm not gonna say the name of the cabin and I'm gonna try not to film any uh, stuff that would identify the name of it or identify where it is because, well, some of the volunteers who uh, maintain these cabins get very protective of them. So suffice it to say, I'm in the middle of nowhere in a canyon in the mountains near Death Valley. And there's two cabins here actually. There's one up here behind me where I parked my trusty rig. And then there's another one right down the canyon there that's also supposed to be really nice. Now, part of the reason I'm so friggin' excited is the road to get up here is really gnarly, like really gnarly, even by my standards. But I drove all the way up here back in March with another uh, girlfriend of mine. And oh, man, we drove all the way up this gnarly road and both cabins were already taken. That's the downside to these volunteer cabins. It's not like you can go on hotels.com or orbits and reserve a night. You just kind of have to drive up here and hope for the best. <laughs> So we did what we could this time. Last trip, it was March. So maybe it was more like adventure season. Now it's mid-December, uh, midweek. They just got a bunch of bad weather out here. So I think that probably kept a lot of people away. The fear of snow, ice, rain, the road might be washed out. Whatever the case, we were lucky. Both cabins are available. And the way I know is, well, there's no car in either driveway and the American flags aren't flying. That's kind of the custom at these volunteer cabins, how you let other people know that it's been, that someone's staying there is, there's a, I'm assuming it's gonna be an American flag inside here that will hoist up on the flagpole. And then that way, anybody coming up the canyon will be able to see that and know that, oh, the cabins are taken. Anyway, Jessica is in her forerunner and she's actually still down the canyon. She wanted to shoot, well, we both wanted to shoot dash cam footage driving up the canyon. Um, without each other's car in the frame. So I went first and she's behind me. So she should be here any minute. The road was, I mean, the road was gnarly, but it wasn't insurmountably gnarly. And she's a, she's a pretty uh, accomplished off-roader. So I think she'll be fine. And we could probably go in the cabin and start poking around while we're waiting for her. Okay, so you can see from outside, it's a pretty big compound here. There's looks like there's a lot of buildings, a lot of patios and a little yard and all kinds of interesting areas to poke around. <laughs> and you can see here, people have brought up all these old road signs. <laughs> there's the flagpole where we're gonna hoist the flag. And I gotta be careful because there's a couple signs here that show the name of the cabin. And I'm trying to keep it a secret here, so. But you can see where it says adopt a cabin. That's the program, adopt a cabin and pull. I'm guessing from the looks of the outside of this place, this one has been very lovingly adopted. Look, there's even a mailbox. I wonder if any mails in it. <laughs> See if there's any bills. Oh, it's empty. Oh man, I'm so excited. It says closed gate. We have to latch everything up because I think there's a lot of wild burrows up here. And you know, burrows will eat anything. All right, walk in and see what we can see. Look, firewood. Well, we brought our own firewood. We brought all our own supplies and then we brought some extra stuff to leave behind for future guests. Look over here. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Another sexy babe with a gun. Wow, how about that? I mean, there's probably some kind of natural spring up the canyon farther and that's where all this water is coming from. But look how beautiful this patio is out here. This friggin' fire pit. Oh my gosh, this barbecue. You could have an awesome cookout here. Oh, look, there's even like a water fountain just perpetually going. Yeah, there's definitely some kind of spring here. That's just like a little deck. Sit out here and have dinner. Oh my goodness, this is so, it's so, I love this. So lovingly maintained by volunteers. Just people come up here out of their own goodness with their brooms and their tools and they take care of these places. Look at this old mine cart, that's cool. They must've got that out of, oh look, there's even a sign. 
Got to be careful it says the name of the cabin on the sign. These early to mid 1900s ore carts have been loaned to friends of beep. Oh, it's from a mine in Golar Wash. Golar Wash isn't too far from here. Oh, that's where Barker Ranch is, where the Manson family used to hide out. Here's the backside. More firewood stacked up. Tools. Here, look at this. Oh my gosh. Wow. This is friggin'. Look at all the tools people brought up here. This was all lugged up that friggin' canyon, that gnarly road. People just do this for the love of it. How cool is that? Look. I wonder if there's even stuff in all these drawers. Oh, sure is. Fittings and such. It's also neat though. Look at that. The rope's all neatly coiled. The tarp's neatly folded in there. Oh wow, even, oh, there must be plumbing in there. Wow. Oh wait, look at this. <gasps> I bet we could play music. There's a lot of grills here. Look at all these different grills. You'd have like a real meat fest. In fact, I dare say there's been a sausage fest up here a time or two. That's why Jessica and I like to come up here or come to these cabins and hang out because it's mostly men who do it. And well, they kind of get bro -y about it. Like the last video I made with Jessica, we went to a cabin on, and I'll admit, I kind of titled it provocatively. I called it Two Girls, One Cabin. And I tried to make it all dramatic. Like we're driving through the dark and we come across this creepy old cabin in the night. You know, it was all meant to be in good fun. <sighs> well, the comments I got on that video from some of the bros who take care of these places were extremely hateful. So Jessica and I are here to, well, represent the female sex and show that girls can enjoy these cabins too. Everything's latched up nice and tight. Oh, a screen. Oh, wow. Cozy. Okay, now I gotta be careful in here because a lot of signs on the walls that say the name. So if you're watching this and you're one of them cabin bros, I'm really trying here. Okay, I'm not trying to give your secrets away. So I'm just gonna pan the room. This is the kitchen, there's a little table, bookshelf, <laughs> a refrigerator. Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow. It actually smells like fry grease in here, so I feel like somebody may have just been here this morning. An oven. Oh wow, there is a gas line, look. Oven gas valve, shut off after use. Wow, well I didn't bring any propane, so I would feel kind of bad using gas because I wouldn't be able to replenish it. So I probably won't, <laughs> I probably won't use the oven, even though, man, I'd love nothing more than to bake some banana bread. Man, this kitchen is nice. Look at this. Forks and knives and stuff. Remember guys, all volunteer. People aren't that bad after all. Look at all the things they do. More pots and pans in there. Okay, so actually this cabin is kind of small. Maybe the lower one is nicer. There's a bed there. There's a bunk bed in the middle. And looks like there's another bed here. So this, oh, actually that's a double bunk in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. There's two bunk beds next to each other. So you could sleep one, two, three, four, five, six, like eight people in here, man. And look at all that firewood, wood burning stove. I bet it would stay real cozy in here. Holy cow, nice. 41, 40 feet. So it's gonna be cold up here tonight. Oh, and then look here. They even have like a whole uh, uh, directions, instructions posted to use, how to use the gas, how to use the water, and then all the steps you to take when you leave. Wow, man, these people have, I guess these sinks are plumbed. These people have actually plumbed this. Let's see, I think I have to turn on the water first. We'll, we'll try that when Jessica gets here. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. But yeah, I still don't see her car coming up the canyon, so. Gosh, I don't know, maybe I should go check out the other cabin while I'm waiting for her and see if it's nicer. We might rather stay there. Now, while I'm walking to this other cabin, a little technical info on the road that I came up. It was a little under five miles, about 4.6 miles up the canyon. And it took me like, I think it took like almost 40 minutes to go 4.6 miles. It was slow going. So I just went real slow. I didn't want to blow out a tire. So I just crawled along, my car crawled along. Okay, here we are right at the other cabin now. Let's see this. I mean, look how cool this cabin is. It's built like right up on this giant rock. I mean, that's gotta have an amazing view. But, oh wow, look, yeah, I heard running water or dripping water. Look at this. I guess there's a pretty good spring up here. Oh, and look, the pipe or the hose that's feeding it is coming from the cabin. So there's obviously water up there too. Oh man, this cabin is gonna be amazing. 
Look how clear the water is, though. Let's see how cold it is. Oh, it's warm. Shut the front door. Oh, it must be, maybe it's being heated by that all the black hose. Wow, so you can actually take a warm bath <laughs> right here. <laughs> okay, it's not that warm. I don't think I would actually want to get in and take a bath, but <sighs> hey, you never know with me. Okay, let's go up and check out inside this cabin and then we can decide which one's nicer and which one we want to spend the night in. Look at how nice this is. Holy moly, this wood looks new. Well, not this, but this does. Okay, gotta be careful. Don't wanna get any pictures of the name. Oh, this one has a mailbox too. Also empty. Out here we got, well, this one doesn't have as fancy of grounds. It's got a couple grills here and a little table on the patio. Oh, here comes Jessica, awesome. Look, <laughs> crawling up the canyon. Yeah, I just drove up there and parked by the other cabin, but you get there's plenty of space to turn around, yeah. Okay, so while she's going to check out the first cabin. Oh, there's a door over here too, look. So there's that door. And then there's a door over here. This is like a little side door. I guess we better go in the front door. Oh my gosh, look, <laughs> a urinal. So you can have a pee with that amazing view. Oh man. <laughs> I guess that's one of the perks of uh, being a dude is it's mostly dudes that maintain these places So of course they're gonna put in stuff like urinals <laughs> If there was more women that were into this and came up here and fixed things up Well, I suppose I could have I could install a bidet <laughs> oh, I see it's latched up here Let's see this cabin. Oh wow. Look how neat this is. It's totally built out of stone It reminds me of the geologist cabin up in Butte Valley. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. It's all stone. Okay, so we got a couple bunk beds here with actual mattresses. <laughs> you know, they're actually nice looking mattresses. And then this is a bed. Looks like it's got a foam mattress, memory foam. I think there's another bunk up there by that window. That'd be nice. Sleep by the window. So you got one, two, three, four beds in here. Little cozy wood burning stove. Look, oh my gosh, there's an intercom that goes to the other cabin. Oh my God, I actually feel like I should stay in one cabin and Jessica should stay in the other cabin so we could talk to each other. Hey Marge, can you uh, lend me a cup of sugar? I'll be right over, thanks. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay, the ca uh, kitchen in here is pretty nice too. They also have a fridge. I didn't open the fridge in the other cabin, but. I mean, it's cold in here, but I think that's just because it's cold. I don't think it's actually on a gas line, but who knows with these cabins, these are nice. I mean, oh wow, it does look like it's hooked up to a gas line. Holy cow, as I live and breathe. Look, a oven in here too. A cutting board, I guess that is, a sink. Look at this, you could do, oh, I guess you could hook a generator up and charge your USB devices. Interesting. What's in here? Oh, dishes. Pots and pans, cleaning supplies under the sink. All right, over up here is the dining room table and it's another little wood burning stove up here. Look how nice these chairs are. There's even cushions on them, oh my goodness. All right, well, let's go outside and I gotta talk to Jessica and see what, which cabin she wants to stay in. Oh, hold on, wait, <gasps> a shower. Oh my gosh, look at this. Ah! <laughs> There's a whole friggin' shower here and that water was warm, remember? Oh my goodness, look at this bathroom. I gotta step into the shower for a minute. It's kind of crowded, but there's a sink even and a medicine chest. It opens on this side. Oh, what's in here? Oh, moist towelettes, nice. Oh my goodness, I don't know you guys. Which cabin would you stay in if you were us? I mean, this one here is real cozy and it's all stone and it has that amazing view. But the other one was, I don't know, the other one was cool too. Hmm. Okay, Jessica's gonna drive up to the upper cabin and check that out. And we'll decide then which cabin to spend the night in. So while I'm waiting for her to do that, there's also these like outbuildings in between the two cabins I thought I would check out. This looks like it was maybe a settling pond for the mine or the mill. And another one. Here's a shed. I think it's just used to store extra wood and stuff for maintaining the cabins now. Extra flashing or uh, corrugated tin, I guess. Interesting. But this 
looks like oh wow look <laughs> look at <laughs> wow more metal to patch up those holes in the roof i don't know what this was this the old i'm gonna say was it an old mine shaft or it's just a trash pit now yikes don't fall in oh wow look at this double decker wood fired stove <laughs> really heat the place up with that oh and then here's a whole bunch of brand new lumber that these people brought in Wow, God bless America, guys. I say we stay in both. <laughs> I was just gonna ask you which one you wanted to stay in. She's already ready to stay in both. Okay, well, we yeah, we could stay up here two nights, so uh, I guess we could try, we'll stay in this one tonight, and then in the morning we'll go down and try the other one. Yes. And hopefully no one shows up. Big boys, all ours. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Hey, what happens when you flip a, is this the power for the whole cabin? I don't know, let's find out. The main? Oh, wow, look! What? What was that? That was the speaker. Oh, the speakers, and then look, the light just came on. Oh, wow, so all the electricity is on now. There's solar panels on the roof, I guess. It's powered by solar. How cool, yeah, we'll plug our, uh, we can plug our phone in and listen to music. You can charge phones, cigarette adapters here. Oh, look at that, yeah, you can charge your USB devices, just like in the other cabin. Awesome! Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this creepy old bed. <laughs> And Jessica's gonna sleep over there. Oh, laying right on the mattress, huh? That's a bold move. <laughs> wow, is it comfy? Yes, it is, very firm. But it's interesting, because this cabin smells like somebody fried something in here, so. Oof, we opened the door and we're gonna air it out a little bit. Okay, so like all of these, or most of these volunteer cabins, there is a cabinet here that has some supplies laid in. Look at this. There's all kind of canned goods, cranberry sauce, sweet peas, oh, even some sardines, bean soup. Oh, wow, there's even evaporated milk. Look at that. And then, you know, spices, paper plates and such, paper towels. Really cool. But, you know, I don't ever like to use that stuff unless I bring something of my own to contribute. So I did. I brought this whole bag full of... Well, except for my canteen. This is all stuff I'm planning to leave in, maybe not all in this cabin, but in all the cabins we go to. So I brought a bunch of extra food, coffee, supplies that, you know, I can leave in here for the next person. Because it's not all about taking. You got to give back too. You know what I mean? Okay, so here's the bookshelf. We'll, we'll look at all the books and stuff later when we're sitting down. But I did want to show you guys one other thing out here that I missed on the first go round. Remember this little door? But it's the bathroom, look. There's a full shower in here, just like in the other one. And apparently this one had a water heater, but it says the water heater is unrepairable and was removed. So you could actually have taken a hot shower in here at one time. <laughs> How amazing is that? Let's see what's in the medicine chest. Oh, look how cute. It's all stocked, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and unpack my things out of my car and make my bed because, well, I haven't slept well the last few nights and I have a feeling I'm gonna be super pooped and wanna just pass out in bed and not have to mess around with it later. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the flag. We gotta hoist the flag first. That's what we gotta do to let people know. Right. Don't drop it. If it touches the ground, you are a communist. Hoist her up, hoist her high. That's a big guy. <laughs> Alright, uh, I've unpacked all my stuff. I brought in my food bags. I brought in my drinking water and my makeup and toiletries, my clothes, and my bedding. I made my bed. So now, I think it's time to enjoy these cabins as they're meant to be enjoyed with a drink and some serious broing out girly style. Okay, so I rigged up the music. Uh, it's time to relax and bro out a little bit like the bros do when they come to these cabins. And to that end, I put on my bro pants. Check these out. <laughs> and guess what? Jessica's got the same pants. Hey. <laughs> How do you feel having a dick? Feels pretty good. I feel liberated, man. I feel like I could do anything. I feel more independent. I feel like I want to go look at that calendar with that girl on the gun. 
<laughs> and I make some decisions for myself. <laughs> Actually, you know what? On fire. I feel like using the urinal. Now, you might think I won't be able to because this is just a printed on penis, but guess what? Got a sheenus. Watch this. Okay, so one thing we noticed when we got here was there's a lot of urinals here because, you know, mostly dudes that come up here. So there's a urinal right here, right in front of the porch, dude, right by the fire pit. It's important to shake it off. But if you shake it more than three times, that's playing with yourself. Oh. Now it's time for a sunset cocktail, just to be obnoxiously girly. Babe I brought Rose. Babe uh, sparkling rosé. That was a weak early burp. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna have to work on my man. Pardon me, I've got an itch. <laughs> All right, we had a beautiful sunset cocktail, a little bit of salad, and watched this amazing sunset. Look at that, wow. This cabin is amazing, it's so peaceful up here. But it's starting to get really chilly, so I think it might be time to fire up the wood-burning stove. All right, had to change into a warmer hat because whew, once it got dark, it got chilly here. But we did get a fire going in this awesome wood burning stove and it is making things nice and toasty in here. Really cozy. I woke up a couple hours ago and Jessica's still sleeping, so I didn't want to bother her. So I took my <laughs> sleeping bag and my blanket out here up to the top, uh, like back of the garden where there's this wooden Adirondack chair that has an amazing view looking down the canyon and just enjoyed the peace and quiet. It was awesome. Little burrows came walking by, wild donkeys birds. All you can really hear is the water flowing and the leaves rustling on this cottonwood tree. It's pretty cool. Well, it's nine o'clock now, so I'm probably good to go inside the cabin and make some coffee. Well, what do you think? Should we move to the other cabin today? Yes, yeah, let's do it. Oh, what's for breakfast? Toast? Look. Egg oh, and toast. eggs and toast. That's a man's breakfast. Mm -hmm. But wait, where's your penis? <laughs> oh, detachable penis. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this breakfast you made. Yum. Avocados, toast, eggs. That is, that's a man's meal. Well, I'll leave you to that. I got to do some other stuff like, well, we got to clean up after ourselves. We're going to have to shovel the ashes out of the bottom of the fireplace. All right, cleaned out the ashes, restocked the kindling barrel or bucket. Now there's only one last thing to do before I check out of this cabin and move down the hill to the other cabin. And that is right in the log book. Now it's cool, this cabin has like log books. You know, trail registers, people sign them when they stay here. Going all the way back to 1982, it's amazing. So people have been coming here for decades, literally, and everybody writes, a little something about what their trip was like, what they did, what they fixed, if there was any known issues. So I'm gonna write my take on it in this current notebook. Let's see, today is December 11th, December 11th, 2019. Okay, I drove down from the top cabin and came down here to this smaller cabin. But the first thing I gotta do is fly a flag, so if anybody does come driving up this canyon today, they'll know that this cabin is taken. There she blows! Now everyone will know the cabin is occupied. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna unpack the rest of my stuff out of the car and settle into this cabin for the night. Look at that! I'm gonna be sleeping cozy tonight. And now I think it's time to ha sit down and relax and have a nice vanilla latte and some 
breakfast slash lunch. And then also, this cabin's got a bunch of log books, just like the other cabin. This one only goes back to 1998, it looks like. That'll be interesting to look through. And then, of course, we'll have to sign the new one. Oh, it's cool, because the pencils that were left in here to sign the notebook are from Death Valley High School, home of the Scorpions, in Shoshone, California. Oh, that's cool. I've been by there. That's a, that place is really interesting. It's Death Valley High School in this little tiny almost ghost town just outside Death Valley. <laughs> but there's a high school, and it's... Well, actually, it looks like a pretty nice place. I show it in my video that I made about Shoshone, so check that out if you're interested. Wow, there's a lot of really interesting stuff in these log books because they go back so far. Uh, I decided to go back and read the entries from right after September 11th, 2001. September 19th of 01, somebody had some pretty stern words to leave. The terrorists have invaded our country. Beep them royal. So we have redated to our mountains safe. Thank God these mountains have been here before my own ancestor, Native Americans, and they will be here after. Blah, 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 blah. Man, one thing I take from reading these log books is how poor our public school system must be because spelling, grammar, and punctuation is atrocious. Okay, break time's over. I wrote in the log book. I'll show you what I wrote. <laughs> Drew a little picture just to let him know who was here. But now I'm gonna go for a little hike before we settle in for the evening. I figure I'd go up to the top of the ridge here and, well, see what I can see. Whew. Oh, wow. Some hike. I mean, from here, you can see down into the valley. There's a kind of a dry lake bed, but it rained recently, so you can see there's still water in it. And then on this side, you can see... Well, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a road going off into the distance. And that's the road we came in on. Oh, man, it's friggin' awesome up here. I could stay up here and watch the sunset, but I think a better idea would be to hike back down to the cabin because Jessica and I have a plan. I'm going to brew some tea, and we're going to sit on the porch at the cabin and watch the sunset from there. And it should be out of this world. Woo, what a beautiful sunset, but it got chilly out there once the sun went down. So guess what? We came inside and made a fire in the wood burning stove and it's real cozy. Look at this. Nice. You guys, Jessica got violently ill last night and was throwing up and had diarrhea all night long. So I don't know what to do to help her. We're supposed to leave today. She's rough. So I hiked up to the upper cabin, which is still unoccupied, to see if it had any Pepto or Imodium or anything that might help settle her stomach. And sure enough, the good people at that cabin did have a little packet of Imodium AD in their first aid box. So I'm going to bring that back down for her and see if that helps her feel better. Because whew, we were supposed to go on after this to three more cabins. Three more days. I don't know though. We might have to abort mission. We'll see. She's pretty tough, but at the same time, she, I heard her all night. She was sick. Anyways, I'm going to go inside now and... See if I can help Jessica feel better. See what happens. Oh gosh. Jessica's really, really sick. Like really sick. And God, she said she needs to go to a, well, she needs to get to a doctor. It's bad. I don't know how we're gonna drive down this crazy road or how she's gonna drive down this crazy road in the state she's in. She's just retching. And it's just the two of us. I do have a satellite phone with me so I could, you know, text somebody for help, but I don't know anybody who would come all the way out here, or could come all the way out here to help get her out of here. So I'm hoping, I just unloaded everything of hers out of the cabin and put it in her car. I packed her car for her. And I'm hoping she can rally enough to at least get down out of this canyon. If we get to the valley floor, we can, you know, hopefully get someplace where she can get help. Gosh, I guess I could, 
I mean, I was thinking I could drive both our cars down, just go a little bit at a time and then go back and get the other car. But, well, I mean, if that's the only choice I have, I guess that's what I'll do. But it's going to be a long day and fingers crossed. I can update you at the end of it where everything's okay. Okay, wow. We got everything loaded in the cars and Jessica was able to drag herself out of bed. I shoved all her blankets and everything into her car and I closed up the cabin and turned off the water and, you know, folded up the flag and put everything back the way it was. And then we headed down the canyon and we're about halfway down now, but we had to stop because she had to get out, I think, to throw up. So she's, it's a bumpy road. It's hard enough to drive if you're not feeling sick, but imagine doing it with a nauseous stomach. Oh, I don't know how she's doing it. Oh my God, you guys, this situation is a disaster. So Jessica made it down that gnarly road out of that canyon, which was really rough and really bumpy. And it was only 4.6 miles, but it, you know, even under the best of conditions, it takes like 40 minutes to travel. And she was having to stop and throw up every so often. Well, we made it down to the valley floor uh, to the closest little settlement, which is Ballarat Ghost Town, where only one person lives. But thankfully, he had some friends in town with him, that one person. And Rock Novak, if you've ever been to Ballarat, Rock Novak and his sister Anita and another guy were very helpful. Very helpful. We helped her, Jessica, get out of the car and laid her down on the floor inside the store, made a bed for her. But she was just puking and she just wanted to go to the hospital. So I took her to the hospital in Ridgecrest. I made a bed for her in the back of her car and drove her to the hospital here so she could get treated and well we've been here an hour now and they don't seem to think it's that big of an emergency it's weird so I'm not sure what's gonna happen there was a guy who was gonna give me a ride back to Ballarat but I don't want to abandon Jessica here so oh, who knows what's gonna happen all I know is I needed another cup of coffee and thankfully the hospital cafeteria came through oh man what a day so Jessica, I left her at the hospital in Ridgecrest. She was okay once they gave her the IV fluid and the pain killer, the anti-nausea. She stopped throwing up. She was okay. You know, she thinks it's because she drank the water out of the faucet in the second cabin. She didn't get sick after the first night. I don't know if she drank the water there. I think that there was a sign on the wall saying the water was okay to use for washing. But I think her problem is she actually boiled some pasta in it. So, I don't know. She thinks it was the water that made her sick. I was able to get a ride. Thank you, Chuck from Ballarat. Uh, he had to go into town anyways to do some shopping and he gave me a ride back to Ballarat. So I was able to get my car and drive. Well, I was anticipating spending two more days out in Death Valley. So I didn't really wanna go home. So I decided to go to one of my favorite Death Valley adjacent towns, Tacopa, California spend the night there at a friend's house because man I really need a soak in the hot spring and a glass of wine after that crazy day but everything's okay Jessica's gonna be fine and well you know what before she got sick we had a great time and who knows we may end up going back to that cabin one of these days because we gotta redeem it it's a fun place we had so much fun last night it seems a shame to leave it like this so you never know might go back. Stay tuned.